Here, anonymous watch guys here. Tim's here. Floridians checking in. Ooh, I was really not ready or in the mood to actually even start this live, to be honest with you guys. Kind of a weird day at the day job. <sighs> Drinking water today. Uh, let's see, Chris is here. Thanks for joining us. Bean Boy, Wet Watches is here. First no wrench. Oh, um, I can't give the wrench to Wet Watches. I could give it to another guy I know, Calico. Let's see, Steve is here. John Page, Kevin checking in from Florida. Nate Dog's here, David's here. It's not my birthday, so that's a little misleading, but still no wrench. Um, I can fix that. Tim. Standard moderator, so you should have a wrench. Cecil's here. Finish up the mountain bike ride with three minutes to spare. Perfect. Larry C is here. Mr. Dane is here, number one troll killer. Darby's here. What's up, everybody? Matt Rock the Watch is here. Fedora's here. Greetings from San Francisco. Ever review live watches? Yes, I have, Chris. And... I have one. Let me grab one. Because that's what the library is all about, right? So here's the live watch that I have right here. So I think they were going to send more watches, but they just, I don't know. I guess maybe I need to reach out to them. That's one of the issues I have, I think, with working with so many different brands and some people is if it's, it's difficult for me to maintain... Um, a high level of uh, <laughs> contact. So I typically rely on the brands to kind of check that out. So Ginger Down Under says, uh, good morning, happy birthday. Again, the title was, and I, I, I knew I should have probably said that. It's technically not my birthday. Um, it's like a month away, but... Uh, I honestly, the watch that I purchased for my B-Day watch, I honestly thought it was going to take a lot longer for it to arrive. So, uh, yeah, I kind of messed up. So I guess it's an early birthday present to me. So, uh, let's see here. Let's see, Tennessee Mike is here. Slim driver. Chris wants a, uh, just handing out blue wrenches like crazy. Let's see. Happy birthday from Japan. Thank you very much. So, I don't want to get too carried away with uh, uh, that part of it. We are going to show um, the unboxing here in a little bit. But I'll, I'll get to it once there's more people here. Floridian says he has his eye on another watch at Exquisite. We'll be there in two weeks again. Oh, boy. Could be dangerous you keep going back there, right? <laughs> Calico's joking. He says, oh, dear Lord, is, is uh, James Duffy on yet? No. Let's see. Mike from Montana checking in. Just picked up a slightly used Seiko SZSB015. Has gained a total of five seconds in four days. That's pretty good. It's pretty dang good. You know what? I just thought of something. Before I did the live stream, I recorded like five unboxings and I look over and there's there's two more watches I still need to unbox. So I don't really feel like recording the unboxings on them. I'm just going to I'm gonna unbox those. I did record an unboxing on this. So that will get posted up soon. This is that new uh, Citizen Fugu or whatever, the Blowfish thing. And then... Um, the pattern on the dial is actually their, the, the marks they make in the sand, it's their mating ritual. So this is kind of like a, I don't know. Yeah. I'm worried that blowfish are going to like start hitting on me now if they see my watch. So anyway, I, I ended up, I think I need to pay for this still, but um, the black with the yellow contrast like that, absolutely love it. So i um, big fan of that. Real quick, why don't we do... Um, an unboxing of a couple of watches that I got in that 
I just, I don't feel like doing the unboxing on and recording it and post it. So this is a Sujus that I ordered a little while ago. I think I still have another one on the way. I don't know where the, they take a little while to get here. So this one is, okay. That's weird. What is that? Oh, spring bars. So this is how it comes. It comes with a screwdriver. That's kind of nice. Not that I really need it, but I'll take it. And just comes in this little bubble wrap plastic pouch and then it is fully wrapped this is that vintage one remember those um shoot what was that oklo or something those steinharts that i was showing this is like an easier to get and um probably more comfortable version of that style of watch so there's that part unwrapped that's a good looking watch. I am digging it. I love that that orange uh, GMT hand. Okay, am I the only one that legit struggles with this plastic crap on these watches? Or is this not really considered struggling? Is this just me fumbling about? Okay, there's that. Nice taper on the bracelet. I know some people absolutely love unwrapping their watches. I dread it. Thankfully, there's no like little wrapping everywhere like that. So, ah, James Duffy is here. He says, Hey, everybody, I have a rare Orient Star GMT. <laughs> and then Calico with his blue wrench shows up. <laughs> That's like an inside joke, but I'll have to clean that blue part off. But, um, this is. Guys, these Seasterns and these Sujus watches, they're they're just nice for how much they cost. They're they're uh, very budget oriented watches. Oh, you know what I just noticed too? There's no micro adjust right here, so it actually has there's plastic covering up, but it actually has toolless uh, micro adjust on the clasp too. I'm digging it, man. I am not mad about these watches at all. Okay, so that's not my birthday watch that I ordered. That's just one that I bought. I have another one here that I hadn't had a chance to open up yet. This is a Seiko new release. I've seen a couple of people post up pictures. And this watch was actually sent over by Exquisite. It's funny that we're talking about Exquisite timepieces. And it is a new Seiko Super Cub um, SRPJ75. I think this is the full blacked out variant. Yeah. So it's, oh, it's upside down in the box. There we go. So it's the, um, it's got the custom fabric strap. I like the red pillow. That's pretty cool. So there's that guy. Oh, I love the splash of red on there too. That's a very good looking Seiko. 5KX series, and it does say limited edition. I don't know how many are made. Custom strap. What does it say on the case back there? Limited edition. So they made 5,000 of these. This is number 646. So there's 5,000 of these. I don't think you need to... There's no, like... FOMO with it or anything like that. I'm sure you'll be able to pick one up. But there's quite a few of them out there. But just a good looking watch. There's a few different colorways of this one. This has got to be one of my favorites. This one and then that white and green one. The white and green one is really cool. So there's that one. That one's really cool. I have more watches here I unboxed recently. I have this guy. The Marlowe GMT using the Miyota 9075. Very clean, tastefully done watch. This one will be probably videoed and um, toured in my... Uh, is that not a screw-down crown? I guess it's not a screw-down crown. <laughs> so um, this will be a tour watch in my Discord group. And then added back into the library, which 
I'll maybe get up and show you what I'm working on with the library here in a little while, later on in the video. So there's that guy. We have over 100 people. That's good enough. I'm gonna unbox now. I'm gonna show you what I did. So again, I picked up a watch. I was gonna treat myself for a birthday. My birthday's not till next month, so don't say happy birthday, you'll have time. Now, the, the biggest problem with this is I have to, this is it. Like I can't just buy more watches because my birthday, like this is an early birthday present, right? So, um, but G-Shock MRG, okay? So what MRG could I have possibly bought? I've already videoed most MRGs, right? Not most, but some. So what the heck could I have bought? None other than the G-Shock Square. So this is, let me get that out of there because it's loud. So this is technically a rebuy for me because I did own one of these before and I sold it. I didn't own it very long. I sold it and I regretted it. I don't regret selling very many watches. This was one of them. That is for sure. This was one of them. And a lot of people are not going to understand this particular watch. I think a lot of watch enthusiasts might understand it, but I also think there's quite a few watch enthusiasts um, that don't understand it. They like, it makes no sense to them whatsoever because it still is just a G-Shock Square. It is truly nothing more than that, right? Um, at first appearance. It's obviously more than that. Okay, I'm not... I'm not dealing with your bungee cord stuff here, G-Shock. You guys are about to see how un impatient I am with unwrapping things. So there it is. Very, very cool titanium special. There, it's not just regular titanium. It's like crazy titaniums. Uh, different kinds of titanium even used within the st structure of this watch. So... I'm excited to get this thing sized up. No, I'm not going to size it on the live show because it does require some level of paying attention to size this watch. And there is a lot of little stickers on this thing, but they give you little tabs to grab, so that helps. At least they didn't wrap it so dang tight that you can't get the darn stickers off, but I think I got most of them or all of them. I got to get this thing sized up and start wearing it. So, yeah, very, very happy to add this back into the collection. Sapphire crystal. Uh, I forget what this, this bezel is actually a different material yet again. And yeah, it does have DLC. It has like a clear DLC on it. And then this, I forget what this one's called. It's some weird... Uh, alloy that is used uh, in just special occasions and the crew that was <laughs> yeah Tim just checked the price on it um, yeah do I have the hang tag here with the price yeah there's the price if you can see it so these are $3,500 this is the MRG B 5000 D1 you can get it it's actually $4,000 for the black one and um I just like this one more. I like the rawness of it, but it still has some uh, low-level bling to it as well. Yeah, Mark, I think the bezel is actually kryptonite. It's, I think it's vibranium or something like that. It's really weird. So what what made me rebuy it? Um, just the fact that I owned it and I sold it. Um, I don't even remember why I sold it. It was probably to fund a different watch. But it, it was like one of the watches that I regretted selling more so than any of the others. And I've sold some really nice watches. Not even that long ago. Fairly recent. So, yeah. That's what stimulated the rebuy on it. So, not going to sell it this time. Because I'm, 
I'm really keeping a lot of watches. I know I was talking to Floridian about that because deep down inside, right, I am a serial flipper, so a flipper at heart. But in this day and uh, in this time frame right now that I'm in, in the uh, watch journey, <laughs> Tim's has uh, Sunday fun day in two weeks. Um, I'm kind of not really selling. So I'm buying with more intention. Um, James says, didn't you replace it with the gold version after seeing Bruce's ones? So that was his full polished one. This one's not the stainless steel one, which I don't even know where that one is. Is it? Oh, it's over here. So I did buy the gold steel one. So this is the gold stainless steel one. This the MRG is actually like full titanium, and the the module is a little bit different. I don't know what the number on the module is, but I'm sure there's some functions that are different on it. But this isn't the the full polished like Bling Master stainless steel one. This is the MRG um, sapphire crystal and uh, crazy materials and finishing and construction done. There's even like little leaf springs in the corner here. It's hard to, I, I showed it in my video when I did the original video of it, but so it's, yeah. So like Luke just wrote, he's like, as much of a G-Shock fan I am, I could never justify paying that much for a G-Shock square, but that's just me. I still prefer full resin squares. So, um, and I really like the resin squares and Luke has a awesome um, Instagram and he posts up great pictures of a lot of those affordable and some of them extremely rare, G-Shocks and Timex and a lot of watches like that. And I get it. I think they look great. Those are very good, a more affordable option. But it's just one of those things. I, I can do it, so and I like it, so why not? Yeah. Yeah, James just put it. So, it's, yeah, it's a thir retails $3,500. Um, I mean, I'm going to be straight up with you guys. I didn't pay retail. I did not pay full retail for that watch. So keep that in mind, right? Would I have? I don't know. I Maybe, but I'm not really faced with those decisions. So it's hard for me to like think about it or discuss it. So I didn't pay retail. So, uh, okay. So a few other watches I'm going to share with you guys that I did an unboxing of recently that you haven't, I haven't posted the video yet. So you don't know about it. Mr. LTE is here. So here is the green colorway of the Titanium Islander. I'm not very good at remembering all the Islander part numbers. And there's no hang tags on them. And they don't put them on the case back. So um, if you want to look it up, you can just look it up. It's the Titanium Islander. So there's that one. I also unboxed, and I've been wearing the, I think this is the ISL 176 or something like that. The Port Jefferson. Absolutely love this watch. I love the colorway on this one. There's some other really good colorways of this one too, but hands down, I this is like one of my favorite Islander watches. Really dig that one. I have, um, let's see, and then Mark sent over this one as well. Um, yes, Luke, thanks for joining us and I will see you at Wind Up. So um, this is another Islander watch that Mark sent over. Oh, okay, so that's the running seconds. Okay, so this, I'm still learning. I just opened this one. So this has an AmeriCorps in it. And check this out. Absolutely love that they did this. It has a display case back showing off the AmeriCorps in it. So it's an American-made quartz. Um, I can zoom in. I'll, I'll uh, attempt to zoom in. So here's the case back on this one. It says AmeriCorps on the tab holding the battery down, which the battery is uh, Japan. I'm assuming I'm allowed to show this. I think, uh, actually, I think Greg has one of these too. And then here is the dial. I believe it's a full loom dial, but you can see it actually has a, a running seconds hand that you would typically think is the chronograph, but this is the chronograph down here because look, I'll, I'll stop it and then I'll reset it. So... A little bit different take on the way a chronograph is done. I kind of dig it because we're so used to a three-handed. I got to zoom back out. Um, watches with the 
you know, the seconds hand just ticking away or, you know, sweeping away that it's kind of, it, it messes with my head though. First of all, I will say that it does mess with my head, but does the seconds hand line up? Uh, I don't think it does, but because he put a huge lollipop out at the end of it, it's hard to kind of tell. So, um, I don't know. I just, and now again, I think it's a nice little trick and it's difficult to tell exactly where it's pointing at. So that works for me. I don't have a problem with that. Ah, SPG says he has a Casio chronograph like that with the running seconds being the large hand. And then the, so there are other chronographs done this way. So that's pretty cool. Is this, that's a non-rotating bezel. I like this watch. I am digging this watch for sure. So that one's really cool. We'll throw that one in the back here. And then I have another Islander watch, but it's embargo. I'm not allowed to show it until wind up. But I can tell you this. It has an amazing taper on the bracelet. So I can tell you that, but I can't show you the rest. What else do I have? DP says some Invicta Chronos have that. So Nick at Strap Habit just sent over some watches. And I will show you those on the live stream. So he likes the Timex Q watches. So much so that he developed a strap habit strap that is custom fitted for the Q watches. It fits perfect and it makes the watch wearable. It's actually comfortable. I've never really been a huge fan of the Timex Q. I think mostly because I don't care for the bracelet. But now that we have these straps... Yeah, these straps are awesome, Mark. So head over, he has them on his website right now. You can head over to Strap Habit right now and you can pick them up. So there's the, that was the quartz one. This is the automatic one. They fit quick, quick release spring bars. And get this, they fit pretty dang good on the world timers, the Casio world timers too. Yeah, exactly, JS. The uh, bracelet does get your hair. Not a huge fan of that. There's even the chronograph cues now. So these are really cool. I'm digging that as well. But I got to show you this one. And I'm sure you guys have, are well aware of this one. This one, as soon as the live stream is done, I don't know if these are still available or not, but I'm going to go buy one of these. I know it's not an auto. It's a, you know, it's a battery powered chronograph, but I love the white dial. I love the T take on the Mercedes hand. And then you have the red GMT hand going down. Um, this thing works really good. Hey, Jason's checking in from Aruba. So I would think I would pair this one up uh, pretty much like he has it, I think, with the red. So because it's it's a red GMT hand and not an orange. So I'm really digging this one. In fact, I might even put it on. Da -da -da. Yeah, so there it is on wrist. It, th these straps are a game changer for the Q, I think. So I think I'm going to order this one up. I'm assuming they're not very much money. I could be wrong. But I could be right. All right, where are we at here? Ah, water time. All right, what else is going on? What else do I have? I think that's the majority of everything. I really got to get this thing sized. I'm going to have to get out my special, special gear to size this one up. Who's the bracelet on the Islander? Um, all the Islanders have the factory bracelets on them. What are the yellow? Oh, Tennessee Mike wants to know what the yellow chips are. So you guys may or may not know, I have these, uh, my buddy makes up these uh, Floridian. I, I actually will probably do that here in a little bit. My room's a little bit of a mess, but so I do these uh, poker chips. A buddy of mine has them made for me. Um, these are like my business cards now. The QR code just takes you to the YouTube, my YouTube channel, but there's other chips. I don't know where they're at. Um, for like, usually there's, exclusive to random rob meetups but um he had these ones made up and i'm going to take these to the san francisco wind up 
So when you go to, if you're going to go to the San Francisco windup, you pretty much have to get these in person is how you typically get these, okay? And if you go to the San Francisco windup, you're going to get one of these. If you come up to me and say, hey, Rob, what's up? So I'm going to give you one of these. I'm going to have a bunch of them in my pocket and um, I'll probably stash them away somewhere too, but uh, I'm going to hook you up. So it's got the San Francisco trolley on there. It has the Golden Gate Bridge in the background. So, and then of course my logo on the other side. So um, some people collect them. They're just kind of fun. I mean, if you don't want one, you're not going to hurt my feelings saying no thanks. Uh, trolley cable car. Sorry. I'm new here. I still call it San Fran and people get mad. So, um, but they're kind of cool to collect. I have um, not a whole lot left of some of the earlier ones. Like I was just talking to uh, my buddy Calico, who I get these from. And we, we really think there's not a whole lot left floating around out there of the Las Vegas one, which was the original one. I think I only have a few. And I'll have some. So I got those ones and then I have the Louisville meetup ones made too. So, but I'm not going to show you those. What is the watch on the back that looks like a Rolex Explorer 1655? That is a Seastern GMT. And I think they did a killer job. It, I think it's even a little bit nicer than um, those Steinharts that I was showing. I think they did a really good job on this. These are very comfortable, and they have a new on-the-fly class, very similar to like what Christopher Ward uses, essentially. So I'll have to get this thing sized up and add it to the collection, to the watch library. Pretty thin, too, because I'm pretty sure it uses the NH34, if I'm not mistaken. It's got a smooth wind to it. Yeah, it has the NH34 in it. And there you go. And then I have, I have one more of these coming, not in this colorway, but I have a different configuration. I don't know where it's at. They don't do a very good job communicating. And then the, the tracking they provide is, is not the best either, but they're crazy affordable. I think around the 200, two or $300 price point, something like that. <laughs> pretty incredible, pretty hard to beat the price point on those. All right, what else can I show you for the beach? Hey, um, oh, here's a, I have a, another couple of chips right here, actually, just to show you. So here's the Southeast Michigan meetup. It, was, it wasn't in Detroit, but it was near Detroit. So there's that one. And then this one was one that uh, we just made just for fun. Um, you can use it like if you're a serial flipper, like a lot of us are. So on this side, it says flipper for life. Right. So like, and then the site's keeper for life. So say you have a watch that you're debating whether to sell or not, you can kind of flip this up like a coin and however it lands, will decide if you either keep it or sell it. I thought that was kind of fun. So that's what that one's for. Uh, do the Timex Q use mineral or sapphire? I believe they're all mineral crystals. I could be wrong on that. I think if it was sapphire, they would proudly proclaim it. Uh, assembled in China. Yeah, it doesn't say anything about sapphire in the back. And if they were going to use sapphire, they would, they would scream it from the top of the buildings and write it on their case pack. So it is going to be mineral crystal, I'm sure. Floridian says it always lands on keeper. Uh, let's see. Okay, the room is kind of a mess. Let me let me move a couple things because I don't want it, I don't want it to be seen. And I'll bring you to the back of the room here. Um, let me turn on the turn on the overhead light. Okay, 
I'll move slow so you don't get sick. And yeah, yeah, excuse the mess. There's a huge mess. So I still have those guys, right? They're pretty much full. I still have the G-Shock. Still have my, my cubby system and all that stuff. But this is the main thing I built. I built this. I didn't. I assembled it. I didn't build it. So those are the old watch boxes. Those are empty now. And then I built or assembled this, which is two of those Alex drawer systems from Ikea. And they're the wider ones. They're like 26 inches wide on the exterior dimension. So, and what it does is it gives us the ability to do this. And then I just put some of that like toolbox shelf liner in there right now. I'm going to order some foam and I'm going to cut it out so I can do like watch rolls. But I'm only going to do that in a few drawers because this actually works out pretty good. So you can do that. And these are on... The other thing I like, they, they're pretty cheap drawer slides, but they do actually have drawer slides. And keep in mind, um, straight up, this is not my idea. The Time Bum, years ago, posted this up, and that's where I got the idea from, is from that. So, so you, can, you can fit, basically, each one of the watch boxes I had pretty much empties into this. The only downside is... So the drawer kind of stops here, right? This is where the face is. So there's there's space back here that you can't really get at. So I'm just not going to utilize that. Or I might put um, in the little baggies labeled for the links for each watch. I might put those back there. So they're, they're kind of with the watch just in case the box gets lost. So I might do that. So then each drawer, I'll just kind of lay them out like that. I've only gotten three of them done so far, and this isn't necessarily how I'm going to organize it. Um, you know, because you get six drawers in each. So I got to put the liner in there and put the watches in there and stuff. So that'll give me plenty of space for the future. And that is all part of the watch library system, if you will. So as I accrue watches, Um, Eric says straps and links are all cigar box. So I can put watch straps in there right now because I haven't even began or begun to organize the straps, the watch straps or anything yet. Which I don't have a ton of those, but now that I've been buying from Strap Habit, I'm I'm accruing quite a few. Um, Chris, yes, the watch library does take donations, but we need to like kind of talk about that first. I still even have your watch that um, you sent me home with when I stayed at your place. Um, I have like one cubby full of watches that I'm supposed to sell. I just haven't had the time to do it. So uh, Nilo's, Nilo says, uh, seeing how many watches you have makes me feel better. Well, keep in mind, I they're not really my watches. They're kind of like the people's watches. Oh, I forgot I got this Zao sitting here too. I still haven't even sized that thing. So, yeah. Um, where did the orange camos go? I ha So I have, uh, I have two watches on the orange camo. I have the Unimatic on orange camo. I'm going to order more of the orange camo. So I have that guy on there. And then I have the visitor watch on orange camo, which I know are Celine Driver's favorite. So the big wrist says he's going to copy it. Uh, the Alex drawer system. Yeah, go for it. I'm, there's a bunch of different ways you can set it up too. And they have different Alex drawer systems. They have the more narrow one that might work better for you. But my main purpose with that, with those shelving units is I wanted to build something that anybody could replicate, right? So um, I'm trying to use things that you can, you could buy, you can buy anytime. Where did you get the orange camo again? From Strap Habit. Right there, that's where I got it from. From Nick over at Strap Habit. And one of the best things I like about Strap Habit, well, there's a few things. One, they're affordable. Two, they're FKM rubber and they're awesome. And you have hardware options. I love the orange camo. I know it's not everybody's jam, but I absolutely, absolutely love it. 
yeah, orange camo. <laughs> it's kind of uh, kind of like an oxymoron, right? Like, where, what environment would you wear orange camo? It doesn't make any sense. So, um, but also the fact that it's a small business. Like, Nick is just jamming on this stuff himself. It's just a small business. So, they make great straps. Or he sources them out. It's not like he makes them. Um, Steve says, everyone is talking about downsizing their collection. Who, like me, are trying to upsize? Yeah, do it. Upsize, man. Upsizing is where it's at. So, yeah. The IKEA Alex drawer systems. And when I get it completely done, once I get a couple of the foam in there, if I can cut them and, and process them and stuff, then I'm going to do a complete video breakdown and show and price it all out. I'm also trying to do it on a budget because I paid about $190 for each one of those. Um, and there's two there. So there's six drawers in each. So I have 12 drawers. So, and if I can formulate how many watches will approximately fit in each drawer. And then, so we can, we can add all that up so we can figure out what is going to be a, if it's going to be a, an affordable storage option for your watches. For me in my space, it's going to work. Let's see. Downsize completed, Nate Dog said. Yeah, so it's a, you know what? Don't think of it as a downsize or an upsize. Don't really think of it as that. Just think of it like it's a cycle, right? Yeah, Ned says he draws a line at 55. It's it's just a cycle. All of this thing is a cycle. Everything in life is a cycle. It just, you have to recognize where you're at in that cycle. You know, like right now, I'm in the cycle of uh, accruing a lot of watches. And then at some point, maybe I maybe I get rid of a bunch. Maybe I sell a bunch. Maybe the library is disbanded. Who knows? That could happen. There's no rules. And Chris is, you know, saying he wants to cycle back maybe to micro brands. He he was out of them. Um, now he'd maybe go back into them. So I think this is a fun time in the watch hobby to play around with micros, micro brand watches right now. And the affordable stuff, the Seasterns, the Sujis, the Islanders, um, you know, and then the the more expensive or, you know, higher end uh, micros, you can mess with those. And yeah. Yep. Like Manny said, it's a lawless land. Hi, Rob. I'll try to say hi to you and Mark in San Francisco on Saturday. RB safe. Hopefully I'll see you there. I'll definitely be around the show. I'll pretty much be at the Worn and Wound wind-up show in San Francisco for the most part all day Saturday, all day Sunday. For the most part. We'll see how I feel and how I hold up. Um, Aaron says he's about 150 watches and about to unbox another Seiko tonight. Congratulations. If I can get through that. There won't be a mob of fans. And it doesn't matter if there is just... It's just make an effort and I, you'll be fine. It'll be fine. Get all the micros while you can because the prices just keep going up and up. Oh, so Matt from Rock the Watch actually brings up a good point. The availability could actually become an issue because a lot of these watches, um, the micro brands for sure, are basically all coming from the China region, right? On top of the fact that... Uh, some of your more luxury watches are also sourcing parts from the China region of the world. So if there's at all some sort of conflict or, um, you know, if there's any issues with importing and exporting of goods, you're, you're going to see a ripple effect. So you guys, you know, think about that. So like if there's stuff you want, I mean, why? what's the point of waiting? I mean, as long as you can afford it responsibly. Check them out. Let's see. I'm going to walk around looking at everyone's hands. Rob, that you show me your hands. Oh. Um, yeah, so I should walk around with, like, my hands up or something so people can see. I'll be wearing a blue. It'll probably be, like... Um, it's, it's all wrinkly right now, but like a blue Islander shirt, I'll be wearing like this shirt. 
So I'll be wearing a blue Islander shirt. Or it says Island Watch on this side, and then it says on the back, it's it's larger. It says Island Watch, affordable quality timepieces online since 2003. So I'll be wearing that, either short sleeve or long sleeve. The blue, there's gray, and maybe I'll wear a gray, but I'll probably wear the blue. I think the blue looks good. Uh, let's see, several dial choices. Let's see. Reading comments, guys, sorry. Don't forget the RR ball caps. Um, I don't have a ton left, but I do have you one. I think I have, let me count them. So these these are only gonna go, I have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I only have six left of these. And honestly, I'll probably do another run. I know I said I wasn't going to, but I probably will do another run. But I'll bring those six, and um, I'll just, we'll, we'll see. I'll get you one, Fedora, for sure. You'll get one. Um, let's see. Dane says, Mark needs to do an Islander watch hoodie. I'm sure he would. Lou says that. MRG Square is sick. I've been thinking about upgrading my Eric Hayes with the black MRG Square. You said you got a good deal on the silver. Can you share where? I purchased mine through Mimos. Mimos uh, Jewelry in Long Beach, California, which I'll be out there in, uh, towards the end of August. I think, I forget what date we picked. August 26th or something, like the end of August. Will you be wearing your signature Olek and Waz? I will not. Daniel, I will be wearing... I can't show you it because it's embargoed. I'll be wearing an Islander watch. Did you repair your... <laughs> do another run and send me one. Floridian wants one. So I probably will do another run. I just... I got to recoup. Um, believe it or not, guys, I'm broke. Like, I'm... <laughs> I have, like, a... A credit card balance, okay? So I'm trying to pay that off, and then I can uh, re-up on some stuff. I know it's hard to believe. You guys, some of you guys probably think that I have, like, endless funds and I buy all these watches and stuff. That is simply not the case. Um, I think technically, man, it's like a, it's kind of wide. It's kind of like a 42 and a half. I wouldn't have guessed that. But it has a shorter lug to lug, 47 lug to lug. <laughs> Daniel says flip watches, broke flip watches. Well, I think that's probably why I don't have that wild roller coaster ride of uh, uh, income, right? Where it's down and it's up, it's down and it's up. It's because I haven't been selling. Typically, I would have sold watches, like when I deal with brands that send in watches. Um, and then I'll sell them to help, like, fund the channel or travel or something like that. So I, you know, made a conscious decision to stop doing that. Because I, I don't know if it was a re revelation or what. Like, I had a dream, essentially, you know. Not like a Martin Luther King Jr. dream, but, like, I had a watch dream. And I, it was like, what if you'd never sold any of the watches? All the watches you bought, accrued, given to you, whatever, however you obtained them. What if you never sold them? Wouldn't that be nuts? Like, I think back to all the watches that I've handled and owned at one point, and I've sold them. I mean, it's got to be thousands of watches at this point. It has to be. Here's that. Marlowe on my wrist. I really like the shine on this thing. It has nice pop. Uh, you guys are funny. I'm reading some of the comments. Some of them are pretty dang funny. Uh, if you build it, they will come. Well, okay, so in JS, that's kind of the reason why I'm building the library. Obviously, the library is to, to share these watches at any given point with you guys. So, like, you'll know over, like, the course of essentially 2023, I'm going to be accruing quite a few watches. I suspect around 500 watches. Tim, who makes the straps again? Strap habit. Just think when you when you think strap, just think 
buying straps is a habit that you can't break strap habit. I don't know, something like that. It's it's kind of a nice business name, really. So if you have a strap buying habit, then just buy them from strap habit. So yeah, so the Q watches, and these will fit on the World Timer as well. Not quite as good as they do on the Q, but they will fit. Yeah, I'm going to get, I think I'm pretty much going to get all of the straps from Strap Habit at some point. I bought pretty much all the orange ones. So I'm going to like maybe buy a different color every couple of months or something. But yeah, the watch library, I'm going to eventually at one point, I'm still trying to buy up some more of those um, traveling cases. The Invicta case is the probably the cheapest one. I think it holds 50 watches. I got to do a couple mods to it, but it's a nice way to package them up and, and uh, travel with them. So I might pick up a few more of those. Um, on the far left, that stands out so cool. Islander far left. Yes, this is the Port Jefferson. I still haven't sized the bracelet on it. It does look really good with this bracelet, but I was wearing it on a strap habit, orange, straight orange. I wasn't going to put the orange camo on there, but, but I love this thing on the orange FKM. I'm really digging it. This is, I can see wearing that watch a lot this summer. Uh, let's see. Ed, Ed uh, Klein says, are you getting watch donations? I've had a few watches donated. Actually, Mark said it's in the chat has donated a quite, <coughs> excuse me, quite a few G-Shocks to me. And um, I've gotten donations from other people as well but I'm, I'm not really I don't think I'm really prepared or quite ready yet to like like open that open Pandora's box saying like hey if you want to donate your watch to the watch library go for it because I don't want to get tied up in um I'm a little here's why I'm hesitant on doing it because I mean I it costs me money to like build storage for them and like house them and then the, the logistics of them and everything and then, you know, as if any of them need service or batteries, then that's all stuff I have to like regularly maintain, you know, that it's a lot of, it's a lot of work potentially. So I have to be careful with that. And then what if down the road I go like, I don't want to deal with this anymore. I'm just going to sell them or give them away. But I'd feel weird about it because, you know, some of the watches had been potentially given to me. What do I do with those? You know, that's, I don't know. So I, I have to be careful with all that. Like, I have to be prepared to be able to manage that. Does anybody else have these um, robot-looking things? I just opened that, that up today, too. That's from dailywatch.co. So they're, um, I don't know. I, th I think there's a couple different places you can get them, but they're they're pretty cool. Oh my goodness. Uh, Jason says, send them to Aruba. That's not going to happen. Uh, Brave Sailor says, will you drive across the Golden Gate Bridge for your Sunday drive video? Probably not. I, I kind of wanted to drive down that. What's that twisty road? I always forget what that's called. But I know that doesn't take very long. So I don't know. I'm going to talk to Michael and see about doing a little drive or uh, Lombard Street. Thank you, Tim. So. Um, that was pretty fun. It was pretty cool. So maybe, maybe if I could drive a car while I'm in San Francisco and, um, I could video there and drive up to around there, just a couple streets and just talk. I'm sure there'll be other people in the car. So it'll be, we'll talk or whatever. Yeah. Maybe, you know, whether it's the Tesla from MM10 or, or Fedora's Audi or whatever, like we'll, we'll maybe we can work something out. Let's see, Gary from I Like Watches has the robot. Yeah, that's a fun channel too, if you guys haven't checked that out, the I Like Watches channel. Uh, Chris says, I need a naughty librarian. I think I kind of already have one. She was just down here a little bit ago. She's got the glasses and everything. It's pretty dope. I finally uh, broke down and picked up a green Seiko Willard. Great watch. Good choice. That would be, that's still probably my favorite one. Canadian watch monkey. That's uh, still my favorite Willard, I think. 
Uh, Fedora says he should see if the 38 Buick would decide to start. That would be fun. Nobody drives a Celine but me. Dane, you literally offered to let me drive it. I wouldn't drive it anyway. Um, Manny wants to know what I'm drinking. Uh, Sam's Club water in a plastic bottle. Wata. I've caught way, 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 way back on the drinking. Have you reviewed at Strap Habit bracelets, Beat of Rice? Just, I don't know, does Strap Habit do bracelets? I thought they just did straps. Dane says, because he know he offered because he knows that I wouldn't. Yeah, I call reading the room. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Oh, man. Bad time to cut back. There's a bottle in my office with your name. Well, these trips don't count, Fedora. That's because that's not me. That's Random Rob and those trips. Manny says hydrating for San Francisco. Smart. Um, yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I will probably have a few drinks while I'm in San Francisco. I'm not going to get carried away. Not that I ever really get fully carried away, but I can hold my own. If people want to have a few drinks, you know, we're going to have a few drinks. If you guys have ever hung out with me outside of the watch meetups, like the the late hours when everybody else crashes, then you you know, you'll you'll see. Wow, there's a lot of chats going on here. So, uh, let's see, Jack is here. It's like the, okay, yeah, I'm not, <laughs> not going to read all that. Um, lots of bourbon in Louisville. Anonymous watch guy says, well, I have to drink lots of bourbon in Louisville. Well, yeah, of course, that's going to happen. Uh, CFZ says, Rob, have you thought of charging people to borrow rent watches from the library? Maybe that could help fund the channel. Um, uh, I kind of already do that, but I don't charge for it. I mean, some people in my private discord, which is a paid annual membership already have access to that. And I of course do watch tours as well. And I've already done this year alone. I've already done close to as many watch tours as I did in the prior years. Uh, and um, you know, I just shipped out two more, and then as as um, a couple of tours start to wind up, down a little bit, I'll probably launch like two or three more uh, when I get back from San Francisco. So, so I do I do the watch tours, and then of course I do loan out watches to people. I I probably have some on loan right now. I forgot about, but that's where I need to get better about inventorying what I have. Rob, do you collect anything other than watches and pens? I don't really collect pens. I was experimenting with uh, wet shave razors, but I pretty much got that locked down. I pretty much have that figured out. Um, I started kind of messing around with firearms again, mostly pistols. So I went on a little bit of a buying spree with that, but uh, nothing, nothing crazy. So, I still, the, the the new ones I bought, I haven't even went to the range yet to shoot or anything. So, I'll be doing that again. Hopefully soon, when I get back again, when I get back, I'll go there. we got a private outdoor range that we can shoot steel and everything. So, uh, did I get the SIG P365? No, I picked up a, um, so I, I can't really, I don't think I can, I don't know, what are the rules on show? I don't, I don't want to show some of this stuff. So, um. I bought a pistol that sh it shoots this. So if anybody knows what this is, it looks like a little rifle round. It's a pretty, pretty cool round. I've always been intrigued by it. So yeah, five seven. So five seven by two eight. It's, it's kind of an expensive round, but I'm excited about getting that system set up. So. Just, uh, let's see. Looking at GMTs, it's a true GMT. It must or will an office GMB be just fine. 
Um, if you're picking up a GMT watch, you can go, it doesn't, like too many people get hung up on that. You can go with the, um, so like this one has the NH34 in it, which is like an office or a caller's GMT. Totally fine, because even if you're going to track two time zones, once you get it set up, you know, unless you actually travel, do you really travel? I mean, because if you travel, then yeah, maybe you want the traveler's one. You know, in that case, you can get the, on the affordable side of things, you can get the Miyota 9075, which is what this one has. And then you would get the jump hour. So, you know, you can pop that out and you can jump that hour hand like forward or backward. Downside to that is uh, the date change is done via that hour hand. So you have to go around each, you know, twice each time to get the uh, date change to occur. You know what I'm saying? So... So pros and cons, but again, it all depends kind of on how many watches you have. You know, does your watch die out? Do you put it on a winder? Like there's there's a lot of different variables to what GMT is going to best work for you. I'm no expert, but my dad had a 22-250. Weird gun with the adjust uh, bullet. Don't know how to call it. The stronger bullet was a healthy sensor. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Ned says his, he likes his Ruger 1911. Yeah, I had, when they first came out, I had one of those SR 1911s. Those were pretty cool. So that was an old hobby of mine that I kind of just recently started to get back into. So you like the dome or no dome crystals? Uh, I prefer either a flat crystal or a double domed sapphire crystal. Now, if you're talking dome or boxed on top of that, like, for example, this Marlowe, you can see it's, like, heavily boxed up. But then you can tell the crystal is uh, fairly flat. Maybe a slight arc to it. I'm usually fine with that. I don't have a problem with that. But if it's boxed and then single domed, I'm not a big fan of the way those look. And that's pretty rare anyway. You don't typically see that. Um, so, like, this crystal is a single domed crystal. So you can see when you get to an angle like that, see how it def the deflection is pretty crazy on it. Whereas if you have a, do I have anything with a, what does this have? So this is, this is double dome. See how it doesn't, like you can still see the dial at extreme angle. I mean, th this watch at the same angle, essentially see the difference. Now the, the degree of dome is gonna matter as well. But double dome on it's a this is double domed. It's slight, but it is double domed. It's not a dramatic one. Whereas this is this is actually kind of slight on top, but it's going to be flat on the bottom, which means it's single domed, and that's why you get that distortion. So I truly intend to do more videos on this stuff. I just I'm so busy just posting up watch after watch after watch after watch. I just never get a chance to do it. Um, this one's flat, so you can see a flat crystal. Also is similar to a um, double dome sapphire crystal where it doesn't really have that crazy deflection. But where some of this really gets crazy is if you go underwater. When you go underwater, it has a totally different effect yet again. But most of us don't live underwater. I literally don't know anybody that lives underwater. So... I think I'm going to, to close out the video, I think I'm going to show you the storage again, just in case anybody didn't see it, because I think we have like about a minute left. So I'll show you the IKEA watch storage again. And yeah, those are really tall and they're very cool and they're hard to find on their website. You can find them used on the eBay and stuff like that. So here it is. I basically stacked two of them. So from there to there is one, from there to there is another. And then this is really just um, a two by four on end. So it's it bumps it up three and a half inches. Because I just didn't want that bottom drawer like on the ground. These come with casters you can put on, but I don't want I don't want to put casters on them because I want it stationary. So this is where I put the world timers. 
and a couple other things. I still haven't organized. I'm going to at some point. That is my plan. But this system, I think, is going to work the best for me. I almost was just going to buy a, um, a tool chest and do it. But I think this is something that pretty much anybody can replicate around the world, essentially, because there's Ikeas all over the world, right? So this is something that can be replicated anywhere, whether you're in the United States or in Europe or I'm assuming there's an Ikea in, you know, uh, Australia and stuff. Maybe. I don't know. So. Yeah. And then this one's empty. Like I said, I still got to cut all the stuff. Um, not that I really have any watches to put in that stuff yet, but um, there it is. Yeah, these are the Ikea Alex drawers. Expect to pay about $200. These are the 26-inch wide ones. And then they're, they're I forget how deep they are. Uh, about 20, like, I don't, I don't know that they're quite two foot deep, but, um, and I, like I said, I bought two of them. You might be able to get away with one. They even have a more narrow, I, uh, Alex drawer system that is used typically for like the end cap support system for a desk. So, but there it is. Thanks for watching guys. And I'll catch you on the next vid.